Hi there. This is the first tutorial in a series about stuff you should know while working in 3ds Max. And today we're going back to basics. Way back. We're going to talk about the three different ways to copy objects, or as Max calls it, clone. You may think you know everything there is to know about cloning, but even pros might learn a thing or two. You may have noticed that Max has a ton of secret and sometimes very useful features tucked away. The more you dig, the more you find, and we'll discuss a few in this lesson. But now, let's jump into cloning. Here we have a weird little Christmas tree type object. Let's look at the modifier stack, and we'll see it's a primitive hose with a taper and bend applied to it. Now in 3ds Max, there are three types of clones. The first is the copy. We'll hold down shift and move. Here are our clone options. We'll choose copy, hit OK, and now we've created an exact duplicate of the original object. If we play with the bend, it only bends the copy. We bend the original, it only bends the original. There's no relationship to the original and the copy. They're completely independent. Now let's make an instance. We'll hold down shift, move again. This time choose instance, hit OK. And an instance is a dependent duplicate. It has a one-to-one -one relationship with the original. So if we bend our instance, we bend the original. If we bend the original, we bend the instance because they are essentially the same object. And what you really need to know is that they share the modifier stack. Every modifier on the original or any of the instances is going to be the same. You can't add a modifier. Let's choose one here, edit mesh. And if we move the vertices on the original, we move the vertices on the instance because everything in the stack is shared. Let's get rid of that. But instances aren't exactly the same. They actually do have independence. For example, you can transform an instance, you can rotate an instance, and you can scale an instance independent of the original. And each instance has independent properties. You can change the visibility of an instance, you can change any of these properties here, including the gbuffer object ID, and the instance has independent properties. That's pretty interesting because they're still the same object. If I bend, they're bending. So instances do have a little bit of independence. Let's take a look at reference. We'll do our shift move. This time we'll hit reference. What's the difference? It looks like an instance, but then there's this new line up here on our copy. Now, what does that mean? It means that a reference is the same as an instance up to the point it was copied, which means we can add modifiers to our reference that are above this little line and our reference is independent. Anything above the line only applies to the reference and everything below the line continues to act like an instance. So if we apply our bend modifier, it bends everything. You can even move things around on the stack and pull them up or below the line to change this around. So now the reference has the bend all by itself, but they're both sharing the taper because the taper is below this line. And we can move it back again, move our guys around, edit poly this guy, and it's independent. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's dive a little deeper. We can make copies act like instances without actually being instances. What am I talking about? Here's our original independent copy, bends all by itself. But what we can do is add a modifier. Let's say we'll do like a freeform deformation. Can we apply this same modifier to the copy? Well, yeah, you might know this. We can say copy. And when we paste it onto our copy, we can say paste instance. And so what we have now is a modifier that's in italics, which means it's an instance. And when we adjust the control points on one, we affect the other. Interesting. So they're kind of like instances. Another thing we can do is if we decide, you know what, I need these to be independent, you can actually click on the modifier and hit make unique. And now they've both got that modifier, but they are independent from each other now. 
Cool. What if we made an instance? Instance. And later on decided, oh, I wish I made a reference instead. You can actually do that. If you right click on the modifier list, there's an option right here for make reference. So now you still have an instance, right? Up to the point it was copied. You got your cool line here where you can add modifiers above it and they only affect this copy. Cool. Now something else about references worth mentioning is that you can make a reference, add a modifier to it, and then make a reference of a reference. Now you notice we have another line in the modifier stack. Let's add another FFD. Now we have an independent modifier on top of the stack for this guy, but the second modifier down is shared between both of these. Now I don't know how practical or useful that is, but you can do it. Okay, what about maps and UVs? Instances and references can only have one UV set, right? One map? Nope. And actually, these objects here are all using a single material. We're actually able to apply different maps and different UV coordinates, and we could transform the UV coordinates independently. We'll see if we change the tiling on this yellow and orange tree, it doesn't affect the other objects, even though every object has exactly the same material applied to it. And we could never do that before OSL. And if you don't know what OSL is, you should definitely check it out. OSL maps were introduced into Max 2019, and it added all types of new capabilities that we couldn't do before. I'll leave links in the description, and you can also check out some other tutorials I've made. And I'm just using OSL checker maps, but we could add a map, an actual map. Since we're using the object ID to determine what map each object gets, I could right click on this reference, give it an object ID of, I think, three, and it's gonna get that wood material. Again, one material, four different maps right now, and different coordinates. And we could transform the UVs of this as well if we drop down a UV transform in between. Pretty cool. Of course, you need to keep in mind that since they are sharing, one material, they're going to have the same values of reflections, roughness, transparency, all these things are gonna be the same unless you're clever about it. So let me leave you with a piece of homework and see if you can figure out how to give each object its own independent, uh, let's say reflections or transparency. How can you do that? Well, the hint is the one of five color. I hope you learned something useful about cloning. Now I have to be honest, I have never used reference in my life. For the work I do, I haven't needed it. Sometimes it's a useful habit to simply make instances instead of copies if you're not sure if you'll need independent copies, because down the line, you can make an instance unique. You can turn it into a copy, but you can't go the other way around. So don't be afraid of instances. That's all for now, thanks for watching. You know the drill, like or subscribe, leave a comment. Even if you thought this was the worst tutorial you've ever seen in your life, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video.